Hello everyone. The diagram that we are doing in this session is a transfer section of a young anther. As you all know, anther is the bilobed tip of a stamen. It is tetragonal in structure and has four pollen sacs or microsporangia. So when you draw this diagram, you have to be very clear on five parts. One, epidermis. Two, endothesium. Three, middle layers. Four, tapetum. And five, sporogenous tissue. Let's start. That's the first step. Draw a plus sign. A very faint line because you will be clearing these lines later. Plus. Now draw four circles. Don't touch these uh, lines but little away from these circles you can draw four circles. So one, two, three, Now, have some point here on these lines because we are going to draw some connecting lines between these points to give a butterfly shape outline. Again, very fine lines because you will be clearing some of these lines later. We got a butterfly shape. These two pollen, these are the pollen sacs. So the theca on both the sides are separated by a longitudinal fissure. So clear this to draw the longitudinal fissure here. Right. We will draw one more outline here to represent the epidermis. Now here epidermis, endothesium, tapetum everywhere you have to show the cellular structure. So the cells need to be drawn only then this diagram will be complete. So we will uh, draw a double line for these outer lines. This becomes our epidermis. Give the cellular structure. Let's draw rectangles here and complete the epidermis. You can draw rectangles. These are the rectangular cells of epidermis. Draw this. This is how you draw the outer epidermal layer. Then we need to draw endothesium and three middle layers. Again, draw very fine line because later you have to erase and draw the cellular nature or structure to it. So now this um, endothesium layer is little larger. So when you draw the cells of endothesium, it should be slightly larger. That is why I'm putting so much of gap between the epidermis and uh, this uh, second layer. The cells are comparatively larger than the epidermal layer. This is for the endothesium layer. Now there are three middle layers as well. We will start from here. Now middle layer the cells can be little smaller because uh, it is generally one to three layers can be formed. So these layers of cells can be slightly smaller. So that's why I am drawing smaller line. I mean gaps with very thin gaps. Endothesium, first middle layer, now second middle layer. Third middle layer. So 
So let's count and see. This layer is endothelium. This is first layer, second layer and third layer of the middle layer. The basic function of epidermis, endothelium and middle layers is protection of these microsporangia. So for this as well, we have to give the cellular structure. This is how the endothelial layer has to be drawn and these three are the middle layers. So the same effect of cellular structure has to be given for the middle layers as well. So what we'll do, we have to just draw some lines here, separate it because compared to the endothelium, the middle layers are having smaller cells. So give the same effect here, the second layer third layer as well. So you can see here the three layers of middle layer. This is how we will complete the middle layers. Now focus on the tapetum. This whole layer can be taken as tapetum. Tapetum is a tissue which consists of cells that are slightly larger, they later enlarge and they start secreting enzymes and hormones for the production of uh, pollen uh, grains. They help in the secretion of ubiquitous granules for the formation of exine of pollen grains. They also help the pollen recognize its compatibility. They help in the nourishment of pollen mother cells which will be present inside this um, pollen sac. Okay, so let us complete the tapetum layer, they are slightly larger cells of either. This is the layer called as tapetum. So you can see here four layers of tapetum around each pollen sac. The function of tapetum one is to give nourishment for the pollen grains. Second, they secrete enzymes and hormones. Third, they help in secretion of special ubiquitous granules for the formation of exine of pollen grains. Fourth, they help in secretion of certain proteins that help pollen grains to recognize the compatibility. And even in entomophilus flowers, they help in the secretion of uh, pollen kit. Now we have to fill in the sporogenous tissue. That is very simple. Just have to draw some semicircles inside. This is a V draw sporogenous tissue. So sporogenous tissue later transforms or differentiate and become the pollen mother cell and later pollen grains. So this is how you can draw the sporogenous tissue. So the main parts are done. Now what happens to these areas? Now you can clear the lines which you have already drawn here in the beginning. This areas also need to be filled up with cells or tissues. Now these areas which connects these pollen sacs are all filled up by the connective tissue and in this area there is a vascular tissue which comes which help in the supply of water minerals as well as the nutrients. So let's do that. You can draw circles to represent the connective tissue and at this part as I said just clear this area and we have to show the presence of vascular tissue here. Again draw a circle and draw cells. That's it. The structure is done. Now let's start labeling. Epidermis, endothelium, middle layers, three layers of middle layers, tapetum, sporogenous tissue, this is a longitudinal groove, connective tissue, vascular strand, TS of a young anther. The diagram is done. Hope you liked it.